Welcome back. It's Earth Week, and all week ABC News is looking at the power of water. Today, it's all about the Colorado River, the most endangered river in the country, and an innovative tool to help fight the mega drought. Ginger Z has more. The Colorado River, called the hardest working river in the United States, is in danger. This is due to two causes, reductions in precipitation and increased air temperatures. We're now seeing flows in the Colorado River that we've never seen before since records were kept. The river provides hydropower to seven states, irrigation to more than 5 million acres of farmland, drinking water to 40 million Americans, and of course, the breathtaking whitewater rapids running through the Grand Canyon. All of it threatened by more than two decades in a mega drought. There's actually a better term for what we're in. An ongoing aridification of the American West. Aridification means the warming and drying, the long-term warming and drying is permanent. It's not temporary. We can't just flip a switch like Colonel Joe Moore in Mad Max Fury Road. But we do have a superpower. Straight out of science fiction's X-Men The Last Stand. It's called weather modification or cloud seeding. We can't create the cloud. It has to be an existing storm system. We just give it a bump. Yeah. Garrett Kamins heads up one of the largest cloud seeding companies in the U.S. Has the desperation in the mega drought made the interest in cloud seeding skyrocket? Oh, definitely. There are currently 42 cloud seeding projects across the American West, like this one in Utah, where they take planes like this with flares attached. They fly right into the storm and send microscopic particles into the cloud. Particles that act like magnets for water droplets, bonding together until they are heavy enough to fall to the ground as rain or snow. Kamins, whose pilot showed us a cloud seeding demonstration flight, says that cloud seeding can make 3 to 15 percent more snowpack. That water can be priceless. It can make the difference of adding a couple weeks to your irrigation cycle for your crops. In fact, the lower Colorado River Basin states of Arizona, Nevada, and California actually pay for cloud seeding all the way over here in Utah to increase their snowpack that will melt into the Colorado River. At the University of Colorado, researchers are working on artificial intelligence to deploy cloud seeding drones. And it's not just cloud seeding from the sky. There are hundreds of those things. That shack you see in the foreground is a ground-based cloud seeder. The little flame coming out is sending tiny silver iodide particles up into the sky. When a storm comes through, they go up to 2,000 feet above our head into the storm, up those mountains, and make more snow than it naturally would. While cloud seeding has been helping get every last drop out of some of the driest years on record, this past winter, Mother Nature came through. The Southern Rockies, which feed the Colorado River, got more than four times their average snow. But experts say it's still not enough. It would take five or six years, just like this year, to refill this system. And most people, myself included, think we will never, ever see these reservoirs refill again. So even with ramped up cloud seeding, something has to give. It's really hard to tease apart, you know, what's overuse and, and, and what's climate change. Agriculture is somewhere around 75% of all water use in the lower basin. The cities are actually quite a tiny part. So it comes down to what's ag going to do about this? As much as cloud seeding is a boost or a help, it's not a solution. The main solution is conservation. Conservation's it, truly. And what we do know is that cloud seeding is booming. They anticipate at least another 200 ground cloud seeding machines to be put in before next season. Ginger, this is such a cool concept, but is it too good to be true? I mean, how do we know that the chemicals that they're spraying from the air aren't bad for us or the planet? The good news is we've been doing this since the 1940s and 50s. Other countries do it, and there have been a lot of research projects that have shown that the silver iodide, for example, is not found. It's negligible once it gets down to ground level. So, again, I don't want to be too skeptical, but is there anything wrong with manipulating nature like this? I think that's the question we should have asked when we built every single parking lot and every rooftop. We have been manipulating weather with our us <laughs> for a very long time. I do think that looking at and continuing research on when these programs get bigger, if it will affect people downstream, that needs to be watched. At least we're manipulating it now to help the planet. So thank you, Ginger. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.